Okay. And then we get a score. So as we said, metabolic risk factors, you have to have two or three out of, um, so we, we, we put systolic and diastolic there, but um, yeah, so just to say what is in there, triglycerides, HDL, waist circumference, HB1AC, systolic blood pressure, and diastolic blood pressure. So, I mean, obviously this person has got zero out of the six there, um, which makes them get 100%, so meaning they don't have metabolic syndrome. Again, that was a major surprise for me. We we have a lot of people with... Yeah, we don't often see the green bars yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's... Uh, it, it, it's it surprised me that that I mean blood pressure was the ma- was one of the main things and triglycerides was the other thing that surprised me. We do see people with high low triglycerides and it's mostly again diet you can fix that. And a lot of our guys, the waist circumference. I mean, a lot of them they they still exercise. They're still relatively healthy. But then when you put down the numbers, they're in high risk category. Um, for waist circumference, and you throw in a, a slightly raised a triglyceride or or the blood pressure up, and then suddenly you're very close to metabolic syndrome. But then again, seeing the bars the other way around in the red zone, then that that uh, motivates you to do something. Yeah, absolutely, and and that will then show us red. Uh, the, I th- I think when you see that red bar, you are like in your brain it clicks. I've got to do something about it. It, it is. Yeah, yeah. I that definitely is, have seen that red light. Uh, uh, switch people on and say, okay, but I've got to do something about it. I just think like reading the numbers on a piece of paper compared to seeing it in color is just two different things. Yeah. I think talking about the numbers while we're talking about that now is we pull a cumulative report of what we can see from your previous stuff as well. So we can see and uh, now that we're talking about things that surprised me, again, we see so many people that have had high high values and high cholesterol values and and then it was not acted on which is was very surprising to me that you know so the question is you know because you get the reports and and you're busy and you have many patients and the patient come in seen by the specialist or the physician or the gp um they draw blood they send them home then the secretary comes at all the test results on your table and you scan through them, it's so easy to miss a slightly raised uric acid, for example. But if you have that cumulative report and you see but that uric acid has been raised now for four years or whatever, then you need to do something about it. Now, we we had one client that was at actually quite a high uric acid for five years already. He's doing wonderful now since we've just uh, treated his um, his uric acid. Yeah, he thought he's... uh... His, his muscle aches was because of statins, but it wasn't. It was more because he, he had a low-grade low, low uh, gout all the time. So, 